Today we maliciously comply with a manager who kept trying to take advantage of their workers. We'll get to that story in a bit, but first, revenge will leave a bitter taste in your mouth. So I didn't inflict this malicious compliance, but I was on the receiving end. This happened mere minutes ago in a restaurant in South Africa. My fiance and I decided to stop and get some dinner before heading to the Christmas lights. We sat down and ordered the food. I asked that they replace the creamy garlic sauce with a lemon butter sauce. All good so far. My fiance and I started talking about the wedding and all the plans we have. Our food came and instead of the lemon butter sauce, my food was covered with the creamy garlic sauce. When I asked the waitress what happened, she first said she forgot, then she said that she thought I asked for it on the side, and then that the kitchen couldn't make lemon butter sauce. The waitress then asked if she could take away my food and go and redo it. I asked again if I can get the lemon butter sauce, and she repeated that the kitchen can't make it, but they'll just scrape the creamy garlic sauce for my food. I told them to just leave it and I'll eat my food as is. The manager then came to ask what the issue was, and I explained the situation. She asked if they could go and remake the food, as the waitress was mistaken, and could they give me the sauce I asked for. I protested, but they insisted and took half my eaten plate away. Now here's the malicious compliance, or rather what we suspect happened. A whole new plate came with lots and lots of lemon butter sauce. I took my first faithful bite, and BAM! My muscles contorted, my eyes scrunched closed, and my blood turned acidic. That sauce was more lemon than butter. I could have taken a shot of tequila with that sauce. My fiancé started laughing at my face contorting in pure, unadulterated, lemony justice. My steak, my onion rings, my chips, my muscles, and prawn were all covered in this. The kitchen probably went, Oh, so he wants lemon and butter sauce, fine. We'll give him lemon and butter sauce. I ate my food, had a good laugh with the waitress and manager, and now we're going to walk down the street and look at the Christmas lights. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. I'm not gonna lie, I think OP's taking the high road almost too easily. They gave OP such a hard time for their simple request, butchered it, gave them an awful experience, and OP just strolls out of there laughing. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit that subscribe button down below. Our next story is, supervisor doesn't want me to do my job how I do it, so I do it his way. A bit of backstory, I, male 20, have been working at this fast food place that's known for serving chicken for a bit over a year at the back of house. I've gotten pretty good at almost every station, but my specialty is on the fries station. I've been told by both supervisors in the front and back that I'm the best at the station. The supervisor, let's call him Jake, that was running the shift, just recently moved to the back with three months working in the kitchen after working in the front. We started working here around the same time. Since it's almost Christmas, it tends to get busy. Lunch comes around and I was placed on fries, which was no problem for me. Jake comes to me and says not to fall behind, which I say, sure thing. He's working on the chicken fryer and at around 11 a.m. it starts to get busy. I always like to keep my fries freezer stocked up so that I don't run out, and when I do need to stock up, I make sure that the fries chute is full, depending if it's busy or slow, and grab the amount of boxes I need. This takes 30 seconds tops per trip. I've been working with this method for months now, and within those months, I never fell behind when restocking. When I was in the middle of restocking, I smashed my finger against the chicken thawing cabinet and I didn't know if it was bleeding or not, so I finished restocking what I had and asked a fellow coworker that's buttering and toasting buns for the line if she can take fries for a bit while I checked on my finger. It wasn't bleeding. When I came back, my coworker was falling behind and I went in to help her. Then I hear my supervisor calling me, so I go to him. Jake says, why weren't you at your station? I said, I was restocking my freezer, but I smashed my finger. So I asked my coworker to step in for a second while I checked it out. Jake says, we're falling behind on orders right now. I need you to be at your station, and if you need fries, I'll get it for you. I say, I can see that we're really busy, and I feel that it's better that I grab my own fries, since I've been doing it like this for months and haven't fallen behind. That way we don't have to pull someone that's already at their station to grab me fries. He says, I don't care, just go to your station and don't leave or else I'm going to write you up. So I go back to my station and get caught up to the current orders. 
By the time the second rush came, I was low on fries, so I yell out to the person on the chicken fryer, Jake, that I needed six boxes of fries. So he goes and gets the trolley and starts grabbing the fries boxes. When he got to the walk-in freezer, the chicken fryer started to go off and Jake comes back to the fryers and puts the chicken to the line. I get to my last bag of fries and I yell out, I'm on my last bag! And I turn and see him trying to drop the chicken into the fryer, starting the fryer, and power walk to the freezer. But one of the fryers goes off and needs to be cleaned. He cleans it and rushes to the freezer to get me the boxes that's already on the trolley. Jake says, How do you feel if you just grab your own fries like you always do? I said I was thinking the same thing. You got it, Jake. So we finish the rush. I can move around to help the person next to me when her bun person left her for a break, and I can now grab my own fries again when I need it. I'm guessing that in this line of work there comes a lot of employees that you can't really put your trust into. Maybe that's where this issue stemmed from. This next story is, my manager told me to take my break, so I did. I currently work at a Mexican chain in Australia. A few months back, we had this really bad manager who was doing a placement at our store while her store was undergoing repairs from flooding. She's the type of person who looks down on you because you're a worker and she's a manager. When I first started, I did an opening shift with her. I hadn't done one before and I kept asking questions which she kept getting annoyed at and kept acting like I should know what I was doing and kept leaving me alone. She belittled me for not getting the meats out on time, aka two minutes past opening. She yelled at me because I didn't put coriander in our salsa when we were out of coriander. She yelled at me for putting too many beans on one burrito despite me following the build guide. She'd been yelling at me and treating me really badly all day, to the point that I'd almost walked out and left her, but I kept my cool. Now, I'd like to add, it's well known in the store that I have hip dysplasia, which in turn really hurts my lower back, so I have to sit down for a few minutes and rest it. Afterwards, I'm usually fine. It's on my file, and the store manager's always been fine with it, as long as it's not during a rush. That day was an especially bad day, so after around 5 hours on my feet, my back was really starting to ache. So I asked her if I could sit down for a few minutes to rest as the busy period had passed. The manager says, why? Can't you just work? I said, I have hip dysplasia, so I just need to sit for five minutes. Store manager's always been fine with it. The manager says, that doesn't even make any sense. No, you can't sit down. I said, I'm in a lot of pain. All I need is five minutes. I'll come back out if it gets busy. They say, no, I don't pay you to sit down. Go take your break instead, 30 minutes, and don't come back until you're done complaining. So I made myself some lunch and sat down in our dining room. About five minutes later, the busiest rush of a lifetime came through the door. We were still a reasonably new store and the hype was high. So I'm talking a line going out the door and it kept growing. My manager's face turned white as she started serving people who are ordering large amounts of food per person. She gave me these looks of distress, asking for my help with her eyes. Cue my malicious compliance. I sat back on my phone, looking as relaxed as humanly possible, taking very big and dramatic mouthfuls of food while watching YouTube very loudly. I had customers ask me if I could hop back behind the counter, but I simply said, I'm sorry. My manager sent me on break and said not to come back until I'm done complaining about my back problems and I'm still very sore. She stares daggers at me, but I just keep eating my lunch. Customers start getting angry at her for not moving fast enough to keep up with the demand, but she knows she can't blame me because of what she said earlier, so she just keeps apologizing. She was running around the back to get salads from the fridge, swapping meats around, getting new sauces, basically things that a second employee is meant to be there to help with, all while customers kept complaining. I just sat and watched, smirking as she clearly regretted not just letting me sit down for five minutes, otherwise I would have been there to help. When the rush finally ended about 40 minutes later, I clocked back on and said, Thanks for the extended break. My back feels so much better now, which incited many glares in my direction. I didn't even have to serve one of the probably 40 to 50 customers that came through the door. She treated me better after that and is now always her kindest self when she's around me, so I call that a win. Luckily, her store was repaired and she went back there. 
People said I was a jerk for this, but I don't care. Next week will be my final shift to that store, and I'm very thankful I'll never have to be under her management again. I don't really blame OP. If my back was killing me and I just needed a five minute breather and a manager was like, I don't pay you to take a breather, take a break or get back to work. I mean, how are you supposed to feel? How are you supposed to react? Why yes, manager, you are right. I will ignore my back pain. You are right. I cannot fulfill the duties of my job. Therefore, I must resign. Our next story is manager kept forgetting my break. I worked in a cafeteria on campus at my university. It was wonderful because I could take shifts around lectures and didn't lose time traveling. The manager used to sit in her office on the phone or just disappear for long periods of time. I didn't mind because I liked my other co-workers and she left us alone to do our thing. I always volunteered to do the closing shift because the owner let me take home all the leftover food. It basically kept me and my housemates alive and we were very grateful. The problem was, on a 5 hour or longer shift, you had to take a 30 minute break. I'd always ask when mine was, but she would always say later, we're too busy. I'd usually just end up working the whole 5 hours. I didn't mind until I realized she was only paying me for four and a half. I asked her about it and she said if I didn't take my breaks, that wasn't her problem. Cue malicious compliance. My next closing shift was four and a half hours of opening hours and finished 30 minutes after closing. Everyone else went at seven and I stayed back by myself to clean everything in 30 minutes. It was a big job, but I had it down pat. The entire shift I kept asking her if I could take my break and she kept saying no. So at seven, I took my apron off and walked out, saying, I'll be taking my break now since we were too busy before. I sat in the cafeteria and watched her clean that entire place. It took her well over an hour. The next day, she had a break schedule up. The main thing to keep in mind is most places have a mandatory break, which is they're violating some kind of law by preventing you from not having one. This next story is shiny floors. In the early 2000s, I was a floor installer for new homes. One of the floors we installed was sheet vinyl. Most of the homes by us are built on concrete slabs. Before the vinyl can be installed, we prep the concrete for holes, cracks, and other irregularities. Most of the time, it takes 30 minutes to prep. Anything over that is an extra charge to the builder. This year, the vinyl manufacturers came out with a new vinyl floor that was very smooth with a little texture on it. That means it shows every imperfection in the concrete. We started to get complaints from the new homeowners about high spots, low spots in the concrete showing through the vinyl. Long story short, the builder blames us and wants us to replace the floor for free to make the homeowners happy. We explained that the concrete is the problem and we didn't pour the concrete. He said it's our problem once we install the floor. Okay then. The next day I go to my next home spending an extra hour with a 10 foot level marking every imperfection I can find. I ask the builder how he wants to fix the floor. He tells me to prep it. I have him sign my work order giving me permission to charge extra for prepping the concrete. We charged $150 an hour to prep in those days. Much more now. I spent all day prepping the concrete. Later that afternoon, the builder stopped by, wondering why I was still there. I told him if I was going to be responsible for the concrete, I was going to make sure it was right. I came back the next day and spent another four hours prepping before going to the builder. I told him, I believe it's ready for vinyl, but I need him to inspect it in case I missed anything. He walked over to the house and saw all what I did to the floor. I told him if it's to his expectations, he needs to sign my work order stating he approves the prep work and I can install my vinyl. He realized I turned the tables on him and reluctantly signed my work order. I got paid over 12 hours of prep at $150 an hour. We never got stuck replacing another floor for free ever again. I mean, isn't this really the homeowner's fault or the designer? I mean, who designed this where you're putting vinyl directly on concrete, which is already just going to pretty much always be an imperfect flooring? I mean, imagine you have concrete with bumps and levels to it, and you're basically just sticking on a piece of tape. You're going to show all of those levels and bumps and ridges and whatnot. What genius was the one who decided that? If anybody should pay for it, it's the one who went forward with that knowledge. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. 
Now, if you want to hear another absolutely awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.